not laying again the foundation. Notice this is the foundation of repentance from dead works. Now, notice again, not laying again the foundation of what? Of faith towards God. Well, imagine that. Faith towards God is a foundation that we shouldn't have to lay every week. You ought to know to have faith in God, and you ought to be walking with God, and your faith in God should be growing to the point where we don't have to preach to you and say, have faith in God. Amen? Does that make sense? But it, So these are the basics. These are all the, 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 the fundamentals, okay? He says, verse 2, of the doctrine of baptisms. Notice baptisms, that's plural. That means there's more than one, okay? We've actually shown in previous messages, uh, there are actually seven baptisms in Scripture, and there's only three that apply to Christians today, technically maybe four, okay? One of them you don't want, and that's the baptism of suffering that Jesus talked about. You don't want that one. Uh, but there are, others, there, there are three um, types of baptisms, and so, but there's only one baptism that counts, okay? And that's the baptism in Christ or into Christ. And so you have to look at the different kinds of baptisms because there's baptisms in water. There's Holy Spirit baptism. There's the baptism into, or baptism by the Spirit into the Spirit. Right? Now, if you look at what Jesus did, Jesus, uh, John the Baptist said that he baptized with water under repentance. But then it says, but Jesus is coming, and he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Isn't that right? Not many days from then. He said he's going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. But now notice, so when Jesus, if you go back and read Jesus' life, it said that he made many disciples, but Jesus himself didn't baptize anybody. Why? Because the only baptism that ever said Jesus would do was the baptism of the Spirit. He baptizes you in the Holy Ghost. Right? So if Jesus had baptized people when he was on this earth, they would have all been baptized with the Holy Ghost, which he couldn't give yet because he had not yet been resurrected. So he himself could baptize nobody. You got that? And so, but there are baptisms, but the one that counts is whenever you get baptized into Christ by the Spirit and you get born again. That's the one that counts. That's what makes you a new creation. Amen? So he says here, of the doctrine of baptisms, plural, and of the laying on of hands. There's different ways to lay on of hands, right? There's a laying on of hands for ordination, when you separate somebody unto ministry, that's the laying on of hands. That's what Paul referred to when he said, lay hands on no man suddenly, lest you become a partaker of their sins. In other words, you should know them and know whenever you start to lay hands on somebody to ordain them, you know their life and you know what they're supposed to be walking in. But then it says that we are to lay hands on the sick and they are to recover. So that's a different kind of laying on of hands. People say, well, Paul said we shouldn't lay hands on any man suddenly, so we shouldn't be healing the sick. Two different, totally different laying on of hands. Do you get that? See, these are the things that you have to know and be able to discern good and evil. Now, he says, and of the resurrection of the dead. Okay, notice resurrection of the dead is a Bible doctrine. Okay, and of eternal judgment. Again, they, but now notice these are all basics. These are the fundamentals. And we're going to be going through each one of these individually, probably in the nine o'clock services so that you will know these basics, and you're going to know them well. Amen? So, in verse 3, he says, And this will we do, if God permit. In other words, he said, we're going to move on to perfection, and we're not going to have to lay these things again, so we're going to lay them once and for all for everybody, and you'll be able to get a hold of them and hear them and go through them. He says, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Now, notice, because that scares a lot of people right there. I've had uh, quite a few people come to me and say, well, you know, uh, I, I've committed the unpardonable sin. And I said, really, what, what did you do? Well, you know, I, I sinned after I got born again. And I said, well, wh why do you think that that's the unpardonable sin necessarily? In that? Well, because it says right there in Hebrews that it's impossible to renew them again 
if they sin willfully after having come to Christ and because they're crucifying the Son of God again. I say, okay, hold on. First off, let's go back to who this was written to originally and what was the purpose. How did these people, who was Paul talking to? He was talking specifically in this case about people who came to Christ and then left Christ and went back to the temple and started doing the temple offerings and all of that. They were crucifying Christ afresh, trotting underfoot his blood and exchanging it for the blood of bulls and goats. And he's saying, if you do that, then it's impossible to bring you back because you have said the blood of Christ is not enough and I still have to sacrifice animals and therefore I am counting his blood as nothing. That's what that verse is referring to. So I don't know of anybody that has done that. All right? Now, I'm not saying it can't be done because it can be. You can leave Christ of your own will and you can decide that you have to do something else to get saved. And then that's called falling away or departing the faith, right? Now, I don't have time to get in that today, but we will be talking about these things. Now, 